to seven. <laughs> His proud parents showed him off to the world last month. Since then, we haven't seen the new royal baby. Now the first. <laughs> you are in joke killing mood this morning. <laughs> the first Bill official Turnbull. pictures of Prince George of Cambridge have been released. And in a break with tradition, the pictures were taken by the prince's grandfather, Michael Middleton, rather than an official photographer. However, they are. Superb. Yeah, we'll discuss the significance of the pictures with the photographer and author Ian Lloyd in a moment. First, let's have a look at them and other royal baby pictures from the archives. is here who is a photographer who's also written books about the Duke of Cambridge and his new family very good morning to you morning Susanna uh, do you describe yourself as a professional photographer yes I don't do that much of it today I'm doing more writing but I still do some pho photography and uh, photograph the royal family over the years so when things. you when you know that um, it wasn't a professional photographer who took these very important photographs what are your thoughts well, it was a surprise in one way. You'd expect somebody like Mario Testino, who's photographed William and Harry and, and Diana and did the engagement photographs. But on the other hand, it's not a surprise because Prince William and the way the Cambridges work, so to speak, is, is to have tradition but also something that's innovative. Do you remember the wedding when you had Westminster Abbey and the carriages and the clergy, the things that we expect at a royal wedding? But you also had those trees inside that were supposedly reminiscent of the trees at Bucklebury and you had a prayer that the couple wrote and then you had the Aston Martin coming down the mile there's always a, a they're doing it mm. their own way so this is very much uh, the same thing it's traditional because traditionally a royal baby is photographed about a month after it's born right the way through from Princess Elizabeth which you've just shown but it's innovative because as you say um, a member of the family's taken them yeah. and very ordinary in the nicest possible Sense. Yeah, I think that's what makes them appealing because you can't. Uh, oh, well, people will, I'm sure, criticise saying, oh, this should have been done with a nice big medium format camera and tripods and to get, you know, um, Lord Snowden in or something. But um, the very fact that they are so ordinary is appealing and I think it says a lot about them. Very interesting that the other photographs of Prince Charles, Princess Elizabeth going back generations are all in palaces or at Buckingham Palace or Kensington Palace. These, of course, are at the Middleton home. At Bucklebury. So again, it's out of the palace and, uh, um, you know, just in a very natural setting. And although the one behind us shows mm. the couple and the baby, there are plenty of them which also show other sort of members of the family, so to speak, the dogs. Yeah, exactly. You know what it reminds me of? Yesterday you had the pictures of Princess Elizabeth and her family in the 1930s. And again, you had, um, there was the horses there, but you had, they very much were into having animals and so on. And what it did was project an image to the public of a united family, an ordinary family that has pets mm. and, and enjoys being with each other. And clearly at the moment, um, the couple are besotted with little George, but they also want to include the pets and, and also the Middleton. So you've got the whole, you know, slightly wider mm. perspective. Mm. Okay. Ian, thanks very much. Thank you. Lovely to see you. Thank you very much indeed. Um,